You know what? We didn't know what to expect when we got there, and it's just as well. Because I guarantee you it wouldn't have been like what you expected. Yesterday I was calling a woman at the Social Security office for a Nigerian man trying to help him get Social Security. And I, I do this for them because they don't know how to do it. So I called this woman up and her name was a Yoda by name. I said, Ms. Ola Wumi said, Da Da Ni. You're speaking Yoruba. <laughs> Bad in Nigeria was the headquarters for the for the Nigerian Baptist Convention. The uh, pastor of the First Baptist Church was going to be speaking, and while he was sitting there, he was naming off things that he needed uh, that the, the Foreign Mission Board needed people and equipment they needed for mission work in different places in the country in the world. And about the third or fourth person he got to, he said they need a CPA in Nigeria. Well, that was, man, it like hit me like a bolt of lightning, like a direct phone call. And I said, that's me. <laughs> and I had this newborn baby and the two toddlers. So that was hard to get ready. And this is Bill with Grace, who was the baby nurse. This is me and Bill when he was Let's see, March of 63, he was a year and a half old. We were on the Queen Elizabeth going to Africa. And we left in, in uh, June of 1973. And I, I had a group of churches or congregations, about 50 of them, and they were, the nearest one was about 50 miles from my house. I went every week. That's what Carlene was telling you. She and the kids went with me for a while. But that didn't work out because uh, the little Nigerian kids and even the adults would come and try to touch the children. They were blind-headed, billy blue. I had, they'd never seen a child like that. If you went to someone's house, they would offer you a hot soda. They didn't cool them. Hot orange it soda. Had the orange. <laughs> Coca-Cola, and they always had to offer you two. Well, who wants two whole hot sodas? And this, this is our house in Nigeria right here. We didn't have electricity so much of the time. We didn't have water so much of the time. We didn't have telephone, hardly any of the time. Even now, I don't dust very much because I don't see dust because when we lived in Nigeria, the Sahara dust came in all the time and was forever on your furniture. You were never without it. And I had a house next door that was vacant and it was also another rest house. So I'd be feeding those people over there and my guests at my house and my family. So I was doing big cooking, which I like to do. And then just on regular days, I had what I call coffee evangelism. I'd invite a bunch of people from different countries in for a coffee party. Uh, the women, and uh, we'd have a little Bible study and just friendship. And while we were there, we had a war. Oh yeah, the B. African War was going on, and we had soldiers just lying down in our ditch out front with their guns, and they uh, made us get out of the car when we'd come down the driveway, and they'd search us and search our pocketbooks, and. Sometimes they were drunk and they holding their guns at us. And so that was frightening, but the children weren't frightened. They played little games like, let's get down and take a stick and play like it's a gun. And they just thought that was great fun. And when the soldiers wanted you to get out of the car, they said, come down. And so and the kids would say, out. come down, come down. And they played that little game because so that's what they saw every day. They were trying to eliminate a certain tribe and some of the people that work for me as my employees in this house, doing housework and other things, they were from the wrong tribe. And so when we could hear the soldiers were coming or see them coming, I had a great big pantry and I'd take all the little children of that tribe 
and put them in my big pantry with a bunch of coloring books and crayons. And they don't make a sound. And they'd come to the door, you know, uh, and looking for people of that tribe. But we kept them safe. People tend to think of Africa as one great big place. And I've had many a person say, well, I have some friends over in Kenya. Do you know them? That's 3,000 or 4,000 miles away. Of course I don't know them. We kept up for years and years with the people that used to work in our home and on our compound. And um, We've outlived. Most yeah, they've either died or we've lost touch. Our children are so very different one from another. Martha didn't count because she didn't, she couldn't tell you a thing about Nigeria. She, she just wasn't she old does, She was just a baby. And Amy and Charles and Bill, who are two years apart, uh, you know, Amy's whole, the major part of her school life was 10 years in Nigeria. But Amy was very much into the American scene, if you will. Charles was pretty much impervious to it, and Bill took it in quite a different way. I, it's hard to describe. Charles, because of his uh, academic uh, problems, they told us, well, you know, there's nothing more we, we don't have any more school for this kid, you need to take him back home. So. Well, at that staff school, um, it was under British teachers, but the way they had of handling Charles, who was a special ed child, was to lock him up in the closet and let him scream. And we found that out. That's when we started making our move towards, towards going home. You go from a pretty austere situation living in Nigeria to come back to all of this extravagant living in the United States. Oh, it was a real culture shock as we came back. You know, 10 years, you're just beginning to get the drift of it. We, we consider ourselves called of God to go be missionaries, but I've heard Amy say, well, he called you, but he didn't call me. <laughs> <laughs> And we didn't know a thing about being missionaries. We never planned it. Didn't know a thing about Nigeria, but we said, okay, we're ready. Olo Wujolo, this is a Yoruba word about God.